Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. We've just recently completed another wave of Marvel Legends figures, which means it's time to look at that wave's Build-A-Figure. So today, I'm very excited to bring you a review of the new Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure, Armadillo. Armadillo's wave was centered primarily around the Spider-Man No Way Home movie, and as such, over half the wave was devoted to characters from that movie. We also had a random video game character thrown in, and then two comic book characters, like Armadillo himself. So if you've been following my Marvel Legends reviews, you know that this is only the second Build-A-Figure that I have put together so far on these videos. The other one being the new Doctor Strange character, Rintra. And while Rintra was cool, I always found him a, a little bit lacking. Because when I think of Build-A-Figures, I think of big, larger-than-life type characters. And Armadillo, to me, really fits that build. This guy is pretty massive and is, in fact, the largest figure that I have opened to date. So let's go ahead and get a look at his posability and everything. So we start off with his head, and the head is on a simple ball joint. Just a single one, and that's probably just due to the overall lack of clearance around his head because of all that plating and stuff. He has universal shoulders, which ratchet in their back and forth motion. He's got a bicep swivel, he's got single bend elbows, and he's got universal wrists. Those wicked looking claws there. He also has a ball joint right in the middle of his torso. He has universal hips that ratchet in the forward and back position, ratcheted knees, and then ratcheted ankle rock, and some smoothly ratcheted rotation. So lots of, rat lots of uh, ratchets, which, you know, you want that for a big hefty figure like him. You need him to be stable. So I am okay with that. So he's a really, really good looking figure. And he came package in six of the seven figures in the wave, which is pretty standard for build a figure. And most of the time it was, you know, an arm or a leg or his head. And then when we got to the torso, it actually came in two pieces. You got the main torso part right here, the fleshy area, but then this big back shell right here, this came as a separate piece, like that goes over his shoulders and everything. And actually it just comes off very easily. It only attaches via this little port. So underneath you can see all his musculature and everything. And it's really cool how they went out of their way to sculpt all that detailing that is typically going to be covered by his hard shell. So I thought that was pretty neat. And overall, I think he's very impressive. I like that the shell is made of a, a soft rubber so that when you lift his arms up, it'll move out of the way for you a bit and gets a really good range of motion. And I really, I love his head sculpt. His head sculpt is really, really well done and it's also beautifully painted. You know, it's not sloppy at all, looks great. He's just a really good looking character. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with Armadillo, he's a pretty minor villain, though he does keep popping up over and over again. He started out as just some guy named Antonio Rodriguez that was trying to find a cure for his wife. So, you know, he made one of those deals with the devil type situations, got turned into the Armadillo, and became a very long-running on-again, off-again supervillain. He's more of a guy that just is always down on his luck and turns to villainy because he just doesn't know any better, I guess. You know, he just, he doesn't know any other way than to just use his brute strength to try to get ahead in life. And that's caused him a lot of heartache. His first wife that he went and got mutated for went and left him. And then his newer wife, you know, they had a lot of relationship issues too. And part of it was just because he couldn't stop the lifestyle he was in. Though, luckily and touchingly, they do seem to have finally come together for good, and hopefully he'll just live a nice quiet life now, or maybe even become a hero in the future, who knows. But I do know that he makes for a really, really good looking figure, and after Rintra, who again was good, but wasn't all that impressive, this guy is just blowing me away. Here's a good look at the other build of figure that I've completed so far. This is the green Minotaur-like character, Rintra. Now, their aesthetics are quite different because Rintra is meant to be an MCU character, so he's done up with a little bit more realism. And it's interesting because Armadillo, he's honestly not significantly taller than Rintra, but you can see he's far more massive. And I think he just really adds up to a much better value throughout his wave. And that's the funny thing about Build-A-Figures is sometimes they can range from being a simple standard size humanoid character, right? Think of somebody like Umbaku from the Black Panther wave, or maybe, how about this? Mantis from the Guardians of the Galaxy wave. I mean, talk about diminutive. 
and she's still expected to kind of hold the same value as something this massive and this impressive and has you know just all this bulk behind it articulation weight everything not all build a figures are created equal and while at the end of the day your personal value and attachment to the character overrules anything else it doesn't always feel like you're getting the same bang for your buck there now a character like Rintra I would consider middle of the road as far as you know the amount of plastic and everything that goes into creating him and you know him being spread across the same you know six figures as most are that's, that's I'd say he's like a little bit above average and then you get something like this guy who is currently the most massive Marvel Legends figure that I have or at least that I've opened don't want to spoil anything yet but uh, I may or may not have somebody bigger so to me, this just feels so much more satisfying. When you get something like Mantis, you know, that's a, a figure that's so small and so simple, you're just like, well, why couldn't that have just been its own standalone $20 figure, you know? Like, what's so special about this? Why did that become the Build-A-Figure? And I think a lot of the time in cases like that, where you get these really tiny ones, it's just a matter of like, they just didn't have enough spots for all the characters they wanted to cover. So like, hey, let's just break this one up and that'll be the bath for this wave. Now, I don't think it's the case for either of these two. I mean, even Rincher is a, a fairly larger-than-life character. But it does happen a lot, and I always find those waves to just be pretty unimpressive, and they're not quite as tantalizing to collect the whole set as a wave that carries something like this guy. So, I find him to be very, very satisfying. He feels good. He feels like something worth completing a wave over. Because how many people thought they were going to get Armadillo anytime soon? And one that looks as just absolutely awesome as this guy. I mean, the character's appearance has varied over the years, mainly just due to artistic interpretation. I mean, he's ranged from everything to just being very human-like with a shell, kind of like this, to looking like an armadillo, like really, really looking like one. So they seem to have just kind of taken aspects of his design over the years and combined what looks best, and you get a really cool looking guy. You get a character that Looks like he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, the Thing or the Hulk or any of those really large characters. Speaking of the Thing, here is my Thing figure from the Retro Fantastic Four wave, which I will finish one day, I promise you. <laughs> I will get through the whole wave for the reviews. But you can see, he is formerly my largest figure, and he is quite hefty. I mean, and what's crazy is that he costs the same as, like, the regular size figures. How they pulled that off, I'll never know. But even someone as impressive as Thing really pales in comparison to Armadillo. You can feel the difference in the mass. And while the Thing is still quite beefy, you just know that Armadillo outweighs him and outsizes him and really just excels in every way. Now what's interesting is that if you have these two, they are characters that have come to blows previously in the comics, so you get to stage a lot of really cool fight scenes with them if you want to. This also kind of reminds me, Armadillo is supposed to be like seven foot something, but I think if you scale this figure against others, I think the figure comes out to be quite a bit taller. So I do believe they beefed up his size a little bit compared to, you know, what, what it uh, should actually be, because he probably should be closer to thing size, but he's still awesome. So I don't really care if he's a little big. We'll just say he's been hitting the gym a little more lately. All right, and now here's a group shot with Armadillo's entire wave of figures that he came packaged within. So this is the time to just kind of give a brief overview of the wave and my thoughts on it. And this wave, for anyone that has been following, has consisted of your integrated suit Spider-Man, black and gold suit Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, J. Jonah Jameson, Miles Morales, Morloon, and Shriek. So most of these figures are centered around the Spider-Man No Way Home movie, as we know. And I think that most of these figures are very good. There are some that I feel are very, very lacking when it comes to value. Especially the integrated suit Spider-Man, who only came with everything you see here, and like one extra pair of hands, and that's, that's it. That's all he had. And then I'm also really not a fan of the uh, J. Jonah Jameson figure. Not that the figure is bad, but again, there's not a lot to it. He's very, very simple, um, and he does not pose well at all. He's basically like walking on stilts, and you have to keep him perfectly upright or he's going to flop over. Uh, Morloon over here, while being much more stylish looking and, you know, more interesting, he has a very similar issue. He's not a stable figure, so neither of them are very fun to play with or pose. 
Your Stephen Strange over here, he's one of the most fleshed out figures in the wave. He's got multiple different hands. He's got his big old cape, the Eye of Agamotto. He's, you know, a plenty good value. The black and gold suit Spider-Man, very similar to this one, except he does have one additional pair of hands, plus a build a figure piece. So he's much more worth it, in my opinion, as far as, you know, the standard $27 price point. And then we get to Miles Morales, who's probably the best Spider-Man in the wave. He has four completely separate sets of hands, plus a big build a figure piece. And two of his hands, as you can see, are like clear yellow electrified hands. Very, very cool. And then we get Shriek here, who I think is very good. She's not the most robust release. She has two extra pairs of hands, that's it. But she also comes with most of this guy's body, like the entire torso section, including the back armor, is included with her. So between being a really good looking figure and you know coming with a lot of the build a figure, I think she more than justifies her price. So there's a lot of back and forth. You have some of these guys that are really, really good deals, like your Doctor Strange, and then you have some that are really bad deals, like the Spider-Man. You have some that are great figures, and then you have some that are really unappealing, like the Jameson one. And you know, I hate saying that because I really love the character and I love the actor, but the figure is just so boring. Like it's really only good for just having him point a finger at Spider-Man and yell, and that, that's about all he's good for. So yeah, the wave's been a little hit or miss. And one of my other criticisms of this wave is that I think there are too many Spider-Men in this wave. I honestly do. And you might scoff at that and be like, well, it's about the Spider-Man movie, and it is. But when three out of the seven figures are some form of Spider-Man, that seems like a bit much. Like, even in Doctor Strange's own way for the Multiverse of Madness, he only has two figures. So I would have liked to have seen, you know, one of these slots go to a character that wasn't Spider-Man. And I hate to say this because even though I think he's the best of the three, I think the Miles really could have just been like moved to a different wave and replaced with somebody a little more different. I do think he's the best Spider-Man figure in this wave, but you know he's a little out of place being a video game based character and being a version of Spider-Man that doesn't even appear in the movie. And I feel that that third Spider-Man slot should have gone to someone else. I would have loved to see one of the villains from the movie. Maybe Willem Dafoe in his like, you know, newer Green Goblin getup, where he kind of looks more like a crazy homeless man on a glider. That would have been cool. And I'm guessing the only reason they didn't include any of the villains or include any, you know, the Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man is because they wanted to avoid spoilers to the movie and, you know, they were trying to keep that pretty under wraps. I mean, they failed miserably. <laughs> Leaks everywhere about that movie. But they were trying. And Hasbro sure did not want to upset Disney. So I kind of get why none of those characters showed up, but I really would have preferred if it was one of them, because they're all really, really cool. And this completes our look at Armadillo. I absolutely love this build of figure. Easily my favorite out of the two that I have so far. He just, he's so much more satisfying than the Rincher toy. He's really well done. The sculpting on him is amazing. The articulation, the stability all that, the uh, the paint applications, even though there's not a ton of them, the ones that are there are very neat. They're not sloppy, there's no paint hanging off anything. Incredibly well done. The airbrushing effect on the chest really just helps that, that fleshy look to them. And the head sculpt is gorgeous. I mean, it's ugly, <laughs> but it's gorgeously ugly. You know, it's just really, really well done. So I really like this guy. I, I love how good he feels. He, to me, is what a Build-A-Figure is at its best, when it's something that feels special and isn't just another standard size, you know, five or six foot tall character just packaged across the wave because I, I, I don't know, they ran out of spots or something. This guy to me, he is like that big prize, right? The big grand prize you get for collecting the whole wave. And I really like him. So yeah, if you are mildly interested in this this character, this Build-A-Figure, or you just like really good and really big Build-A-Figures, I highly recommend this one. Naturally, you gotta collect the entire wave to get him, but as you know, I stated, I think the wave is pretty solid overall. It's got its problems. You know, not everything's perfect with it, and some of the figures are definitely more worth it than others. The good news is that the figure that I think is the worst value in the wave isn't one that includes a Build-A-Figure piece. So you can easily skip that Spider-Man if you want to. And you just collect the six that come with the pieces. Um, it's totally up to you. I mean, he's a good figure, the little Spider-Man. He's really, really good looking. But 
I really don't think they should be charging full price for him because he's barely got anything going on. Uh, the other characters are really cool. You got a good blend of MCU characters, a couple comic characters that up to this point haven't had figures, and then you get a random video game Miles Morales thrown in, though he could honestly pass for either a live action or comic book version. He's kind of like a halfway in between, right? Like animated, but realistically so. So he's pretty solid too, and I, I love his electric hands. Those really make the figure for me, make him look really awesome. So yeah, I, I think if you want to get this guy, you won't regret going through the wave to get him. Or if you're somebody that peruses the secondary market, you might be able to find somebody who has already assembled Armadillo that maybe they just don't have attached for the character or they're short on cash, they need the money, whatever it is, and maybe you can pick them up for a good price without having to buy the entire wave. Either way, I highly suggest this guy. I think he is utterly fantastic. And even though I haven't handled most other build a figures in the past, I, I just, from the ones I've seen, I think he is easily one of the most satisfying and just has a cool factor that's dialed up to 11. So he is highly, highly recommended for me. Of course, that is just my opinion on Armadillo. So now I want to know what you all think. Do you think I'm throwing too much praise on this guy? Is he really nothing special? And it's just the fact that I'm a newbie here that makes him feel that way? Or do you agree? Do you think he actually is really, really cool and you know is one of the better Build-A-Figures? Do you think he's worth picking up the entire wave for? Or is he only worth it to you if maybe you could just buy him directly for you know hopefully less than the entire wave? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very, very cool look at the new Marvel Legends Armadillo Build-A-Figure. And with all that said, I will see you next time.